Good afternoon. I've never seen a more beautiful group of faces in my life. I am Pamela Geller. My website is Atlas Shrugs. And I'd like to know, where is Rivka? Where is Rivka? Why isn't Rivka at this rally today? I know she wanted to be. I know she loves the idea of a rally. I know she does. Why is she not free to go to a park in Columbus, Ohio? Why have we not heard a word from Rivka since she came to Ohio? Why was the hearing that was scheduled today, the dependency hearing that was scheduled today, canceled? I'm not saying it's anything nefarious or anything like that, but why don't we know? Why hasn't it been rescheduled? Rivka Bari is in Ohio today because of a double cross. Because her parents had retained a lawyer who made a deal with Rivka's guardian ad litem. The parents had been uh, in danger of being held in contempt of court for not, not revealing documents related to their immigration status. And here again, Pamela Geller has shown in documents that she discovered that they're here illegally. And that's one of the reasons, obviously, why they did not produce the documents when the court asked them to. But because they were going to be held in contempt of court, they were in danger of losing this whole thing because they would be found to be illegal immigrants, they'd be found to be in contempt, and so on. So they made a deal, the lawyer made a deal with the guardian ad litem that Rivka would be returned to Ohio, but kept in foster care until she was 18. And in return, the immigration charge would be dropped. The contempt of court charge for the lack of the immigration documents would be dropped. As soon as Rifka, and see, the idea that she would be held in foster care until she was 18 is essentially conceding her freedom. She doesn't have to be returned to her home because when she's 18 and she's no longer a minor, she can live wherever she wants. So, as soon as she got back to Ohio, the parents fired the lawyer who made the deal and said all deals are off. And now they're agitating through their new lawyers to have Rivka returned home now that they have her back in state. This was the mistake that the guardian ad litem in Florida made in making that deal um, in Florida because I think the guardian ad litem that was representing Rivka in Florida, she believed Rivka. She believed that Rivka was in danger. She did not want Rivka to be sent back to her parents. She knew that she had been abused. She, I mean, I think was aware of that. But she didn't like the fact that, me, that all this media attention had been given to Rivka. She thought it would be best for everybody involved if we could make an agreement that if they agree to leave her alone, let her dependency case go through, let her stay in foster care for nine months until she's 18, then they wouldn't pursue prosecution of Rivka's parents for the immigration issue and that, that whole deal. They wouldn't push it. So they made this deal to let everything go away. She gets back to Ohio, they leave, and they gave her the word, you know, hey, we won't we won't push the, you know, the, her, her parents' attorney said, we won't interfere with the dependency case. Well, that changed pretty quickly when, uh, when, when they got back to Ohio because her parents fired those attorneys. So now they, they rehired Muslim activist attorneys. And so I think it's very evident that if they wanted to lay, let it lay down and go away, they had that opportunity. And that's not the case. They are actually going after her. And that's why parents, like Rivka Berry's parents, are under a horrendous pressure by the Muslim community to kill her, torture her, send her back to her country, put her in a mental institution, like what they do to the people who leave Islam in the Middle East. As a Christians, under the Islamic law, under the Sharia law, you are not a human being in their eyes, because Sharia law didn't give a room to any other denomination religions. The threat of radical Islam is real. A threat of Islamization coming to the world, it is real in their eyes. What's happening to Rifka? is Sharia. I mean, yep. this is the this is female apostasy. They have to be imprisoned until they recant. This is what's this is what's happening. To her. There's no other way to describe what the arrest, the house arrest that Rivka is under. It's it's shocking. They are literally trying to isolate her from Christian community so that she's discouraged. I really believe it's it's one of the tactics. And uh, and I'm thinking, look, she's a 17 year old girl. She's not four. If a 17 year old girl requests to visit, have a visit with some person, unless they're like criminal actions going on, 
how can you say no to a 17 year old girl's request that's committed no crime? I mean, I don't understand it, unless it's Sharia, and it is Sharia law. America, wake up. Yeah. We are being desensitized. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. We are being yes. misinformed. Yes. And we are being told it's our fault. Yeah. America, you have to know this is not our fault. What is the word kill? The word, when the word kill is said, it means kill. Here we find ourselves um, in, a, in a national debate as to uh, over her life. And I'm convinced that I know what the, what the struggle's about. And so I want you to know that none of this would be here today. We wouldn't be standing here today. There'd be no media talking today. If a, if a little girl hadn't decided, a 16-year-old girl hadn't decided that she was not going to walk away from her faith in Jesus as the Son of God because she had enough courage. Freedom of religion, and this is why we're here today, to talk about Rivka. Freedom of religion is the most important freedom that Americans have. There's a reason why those Virginians wrote it into the First Amendment. There's a reason why it was number one. And it's because it's essential in order to function as a democracy that we be able to exercise our religious freedom. Enough. There are enough dead girls. Enough. There are enough dead girls. How much proof do you need? How many, how many bodies? Uh, it's, it's a, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a crime. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a war crime. It really is. Today, it's a, there's, there's something nasty and ugly in the air. Okay, and I, I won't have it. I won't have it. And this is a culmination of that ugliness. So I ask you, no more dead girls. No, no more dead girls. I say that I, this is a slow motion execution. It's bad enough that if she doesn't go back, she's highly marked.